cubic boron nitride. Check out these inserts. Buddy Kevin gave me a handful of these. Let's try hard turning. So what is hard turning? Turning stuff, I think like 45 or 50 up to 68 Rockwell. I don't really know how to describe it other than 60 Rockwell is really hard. Uh, CBN or cubic boron nitride is apparently like the second hardest thing uh, on earth next to diamonds. I, th I think it's all synthetically made, but this is awesome because this fits in our regular Tormach holder, our CNMG 432 type holder. So let's throw in these and let's see if we can turn this hardened dowel pin. So how hard are these dowel pins? Regular file, piece of one inch 1018 steel. You can feel and hear and see the file bite into the material. Swap it out with the, one of these dowel pins. These are from McMaster. Unfortunately, they don't give the hardness rating on them, at least in a Rockwell. They're hard though. Pushing down as hard as I can here. Just gips right over. You don't run a file backwards, but I'm just trying to show. I mean, there's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. Just nothing. They're hard. Let's jog over. Okay, we'll set that at zero and we'll just take a test cut by hand. We wanna use all the surface footage per minute, high SFM. We'll talk about that here in a minute on just the speeds and feeds. Forward. Look at that finish. We're just messing around here. We're not even getting serious yet. Look at that. How friggin' awesome is that? We'll use just the conversational and path pilot to do some OD turning. We'll go from zero back to negative. We should be able to go to negative one. From one down to 0.95. Now here's the thing. You wanna go roughing depth of cut. We're only gonna go three thou and say 2,000. So it's a really thin depth of cut. We're actually gonna go pretty slow. We might be able to speed this up. Uh, you know, we'll do three and 0 Beautiful finish. Look at that finish. I don't know whether that part's hot or not. Yeah, it's warm. It actually wasn't that hot. After about 30 seconds, I could touch it. Um, and I'm sorry, just this is amazing. I think this is so freaking cool. Look at that. It was pretty cool seeing the chips coming off. I need to figure out if we're doing a good recipe though for, you know, for tool life and cut life, so forth. Here's the other question. Yes. What do you think, Judd? Do you like this? Do you like hard? Do you like hard turning, bud? What do you think? What do you think? Uh, here's the question, though: Did it keep its Rockwell hardness? When I was experimenting a little bit before we filmed this, they seemed to lose their hardness. Now I wasn't 
I was doing a much deeper depth of cut. So I'm wondering if that affected it. Video description, there's a couple of really good modern machine shop articles. They're like 20 years old. So I think it's kind of funny. Hard turning, super new to me, not really new in the industry. I still think it's so cool, especially because go on eBay, buy these CBN inserts. They're not expensive. They fit in your existing tool holders, have fun. Um, you wanna do a thin depth of cut, super high surface feet per minute, and a relatively slow feed rate. So we were doing 2,000 per rev and 2,500 uh, inches a minute, which is I think about 650 surface feet per minute, which actually nowadays doesn't even seem that high for steel with, on you know modern tooling. Um, so let's put this back in in a second and try some harder cuts and just see what happens. Uh, but let's first check actually, did we keep our hardness? I will mention that then go read through this stuff if you're interested, but it seems like to do this, you need to have a pretty rigid setup. You gotta have a rigid tool holder, rigid work, a rigid machine in general. You can do it on a manual, but you gotta be careful with backlash. I think interrupted cuts are really hard on these inserts. The advantages are really cool. If you've got a hardened part, whether it's a dowel pin or, you know, I was thinking, can you do a ball screw that's hardened, but that's maybe interrupted, but it, boy, it'd be nice to turn down the end of a ball screw to fit a nut on it. Although I guess you can't really thread do they make CBN threading inserts? I don't know, folks. What do you, I'm sure someone watching this video knows more, way more about this than I do. My understanding is you're actually annealing the part right ahead of the cut, which is, I think, one reason why you're seeing the heat. And in theory, you're pulling the heat out mostly with the chip, not dumping it into the part. But by annealing it, it's allowing it to cut. That's really cool. My question, though, is, again, do we anneal the whole part? In other words, if it's not hard, any more than this is cool, but it's not as useful or not as relevant. But still, like I think John Grosso does some hard turning for some of his knife pivots. I think he uses standard tooling. We might throw one in at the end here and see how long it lasts. But if you need a wear item, a custom pivot pin, you know, hardened steel is cheap. Grinding it is usually difficult, expensive, not something in the normal home shop repertoire. Um, so that to me is what's so cool. And then the fact that you can sneak up on it is so cool. You can take really small depths of cut. That's something we've kind of struggled with with our lathe is normally with a lathe insert, you've got to cut deep enough to activate the chip breaker, which means, you know, if you need to take a two or three thou cleanup pass, you can do it, but you might get birds nesting and that may affect the finish and it's not safe. So this is, it's funny, it looks the same, like the tool looks the same shape, but it's really totally different process. Okay, so again, this is the uncut side. File just skips right over it. Oh, awesome. It stayed hard. Awesome. That's super cool because again, whoops, here's what happened yesterday. We cut this pin much, much, much deeper depth of cut. So the pin stayed hard, but this part here, here the file, the file cut into it. So that was no good. So that's what we learned. Do this right depth of cut, you can maintain the hardness. You're not annealing deeper into the pin and freaking beautiful, awesome. So conversational, start at 0.95. Let's go down to 0.875. And this time though, we'll keep the same depth of cut. Let's just go faster to your 0 0.00, say six, and 0 0.005 on the finish. Isn't that interesting? We're not getting the flame anymore. Maybe that's a good thing. It looks like it's back uh, cutting, rubbing a little. That's not good. It's much less exciting when uh, we're not creating massive amounts of flames. There we go. So when you go slower, like that on that finish feed rate, that's when you get all the chip heat. So I'll just leave that in there. Um, actually, that's really interesting. Look at the uh, the bird's nest. 
I know chip breaking has been kind of an ongoing joke with my channel. Um, I have no idea. There is no chip breaker here, obviously, in the insert itself, but I wonder what the, you know, this is a big deal. I think a lot of people are doing hard turning at a production level, and I wonder what the etiquette is there. So, oh, I'm getting a little bit of bite there. Interesting. Well, not at the end there, but there I am. Now, a couple things that could be because that dowel pin isn't hardened, isn't through hardened. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I wonder if that's it. I want to make some flames again for fun. Let's go back to uh, the slower roughing. Okay, the fact that we're not getting flames, I have to think that means this pin is not through hardened, which is not crazy to think that these dowel pins are just case hardened or service hardened. Not, not, not a big deal. Um, can someone in the comments tell me if that sounds like it could be correct as to what's going on here? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy it. I certainly had a lot of fun. I think there are a lot of uses for this. I know we've had some instances where I've wanted to have like a a custom bushing or a pin or something that's kind of like a wear item and I just had never thought you know I don't use a service grinder a ton especially with the grind all the hair egg to set that up um, and this idea that in the same machine the same setup even the same tool holder you could turn something that's either been heat treated or was purchased hard pretty cool actually I really think it is so hope uh, hope you guys enjoyed take care see you next Wednesday